Hey everyone, welcome to Limitless Radio Cast, episode 44. Wherever you're at, tune in, turn it up, and sit back and enjoy the show. We'd like to thank True Tubes Tattoo Supply for sponsoring this show. All you tattooers out there, go out and get all your equipment, your inks, your needles, your pens, your PPE, anything you need for tattooing, True Tubes Tattoo Supply has you covered. Limitless, at checkout, get a 10% discount. Check them out. Remember, stay true. We'd also like to thank Magic City Brewing Company, located in Akron, Ohio. For all your wonderfully great crafted beers, check out Magic City Brewing in Akron, Ohio. Remember to go out there and check out RollAmongUs.com also. For all your fight gear needs, they have fight shorts, geese, standard geese, lanky geese, rash guards, anything. Some t-shirts, sweatshirts, accessories. You want it, they got it. RollAmongUs.com, Limitless20 at checkout for a 20% discount. Check them out. Also, go out there and check out BattleBomb.com. Limitless20 at checkout for a 20% discount. They have CBD and non-CBD rubs for those aches, pains, those muscle strains. Put it on rub it in gonna feel great trust me try it out a little bit see what it does i'm telling you right now i use it all the time it's gonna feel great remember battlebomb.com limitless 20 at checkout hey everybody welcome to the show hope all you guys are doing well out there enjoying yourself taking care of yourself and being safe Today, we have an amazing show lined up for you, an amazing guest. He's a legend in the Brazilian jiu-jitsu world. But first, we want to shout out all our sponsors. You got Lanky, True Tubes Tattoo Supply, Magic City Brewing Company, located in Akron, Ohio, and Battle Bomb. These are all amazing, amazing companies that we deal with and that sponsor our show and take care of us. And we would love for you guys in return to take care of them. You go out to rollamongus.com, lanky geese, standard geese, rash guards, t-shirts, hoodies, other things, <clears throat> all kinds of stuff. Put in Limitless 20 at checkout, get a 20% discount. It's easy, just easy peasy, just like that, simple. For all and everybody out there, who loves tattoos, who knows anyone who does tattooing, please do us a favor, direct them to True Tubes Tattoo Supply. This right here, you can buy shirts like this, hoodies like this, hats with those logos on it. For all the people that are in the business, you can get your pens, inks, needles, disposable equipment, PPE equipment, everything that you need to work in a tattoo parlor, tattoo shop, they have it all. It's amazing. And if you put Limitless in at your checkout, you get a 10% discount. Please, guys, go out there and share about this great and amazing company located in Columbus, Ohio. So true to us, Limitless Radio Cast, located in Canton, Ohio, or Ohio Brothers. They also, the owner is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner, so that makes it even awesomer. So on top of that, you have Magic City Brewing Company. You can go out there and follow them all social media. If you're local, you can go and buy special beers that they brew all the time. They do collaborations, collabs with all kinds of people in the area. They really, really do an amazing job. Super talented people there. Super good friends with the owner of the company. We actually are training partners. They do Magic City Brewing Company. It's just so good. Please go out there, follow them on social media, give them a like, give them a review, check out what they're doing and everything. Also go out and check out battlebound.com. They have CBD and non-CBD rub ointment that you can rub on your body, that you can put on your aches and pains and everything after training or running or exercising, whatever it is, you can rub some on there, try it out, see how it is, go out there, support them as they support us. We appreciate all of you guys so much. Now to the show with our amazing guests that we have. Today, we're hanging out with Alberto Crane. He's a fifth degree black belt under Professor Dracolino and Carlos Gracie Jr. He's the owner of Legacy BJJ in Burbank, California. He's also a retired mixed martial artist who has won a ton of accolades in the BJJ world. He was very successful in the MMA world, but he has one of the most amazing stories that you can ever hear of to be in the, in the fight grappling world and everything. He was diagnosed with MS in 2012, and he used a company called TACFIT that we're going to get into today to talk about how that helped him get out of that, to overcome MS, to survive, and to be able to go out there and train and be healthy. It's going to be so amazing. We appreciate Alberto coming in, hanging out with us, giving us the time Thank you so much, Alberto, for being with us. We appreciate you very much, man. With us, we yeah, appreciate thank you. you very much. 
Thank you guys. It's a it's a big pleasure and always an honor and and always a good time talking about jujitsu. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you um when you made that decision, was it like I'm all in? When you first because you've seen it before when you were on vacation in uh, Brazil uh, when you started uh, BJJ. Uh, man, I uh, I was on vacation. I um I, I I'm from New Mexico originally. And uh, one of my best friends, Amal Easton, and there was a small group uh, that was doing jujitsu in the early days. This is like 93, 94. Um, and I, it took them about six months. I, was, I worked at this restaurant right after high school. It took about six months for the guys to convince me to do one class. And my friend, who was, you know, about 140 pounds, he was a small, small guy, uh, he armbarred me like, you know, arm maybe once. And then I was like, I couldn't believe it. I'll like, let's go again. And then he armed me like 10 times. <laughs> and I was like, I was, my, my mind was blown. I was like, what, what is this? <laughs> and I couldn't stop thinking about it. And then I made sure I never missed the class. There was classes first, just once a week. And then there was classes twice a week. And then I started watching the UFCs and, you know, and then Gracie and actions and just everything else that came with that. That's and just, I never looked back. My like, my, like I said, my friend Amal was in that group, and he ended up actually moving down to Brazil. Oh, nice! And uh, and uh, came back, and we started training in his garage after that. Um, and he took me to a couple tournaments in California, and then forget about it. Just I got deeper and deeper and deeper, and uh, just couldn't stop thinking about it. You know, I, I, I'm sure you guys can relate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once yeah, it bites you. <laughs> That's what the amazing thing is, is it's hard to ask this question to someone and people who have already done it and they've done it for a long period of time, because when you explain it to someone outside of BJJ or, you know, grappling or anything, they don't know what the affliction is of it, of why you want it. It just draws you in, doesn't it, Alberta? Like it just like... <laughs> You know, at the beginning, right? I remember too when I was I was eighteen. I had a I, had the, I worked at this like fine dining restaurant, and you know, making money, and and um, and uh, it just gave me peace, just peace, you know, in a way, uh, made me happy, you know. I'm not nothing else. I didn't know sure. anything else about it, and uh, and then I like I said, I was mind blown that this little guy could armbar me, and then uh, and then uh, like I then I just got deeper and deeper, and yeah, just. So it's like one of those things, right? Uh, yeah. Once you dive in, that's like what Chad just said, like you dive yeah. in your hook. So for yeah. me and, and all our listeners know this because I've said it several times, but I, so I'm a three stripe white belt. So I'm a, I started when I was 42. <laughs> so I'm very, I'm very green. <laughs> and he started, he started a month before uh, the COVID. first COVID lockdown yeah. too. Yeah, here in Ohio. So, so he had about a month yeah. of training in before yeah. we had to shut the doors for a had nine classes and it was like, boom. <laughs> so a lot of people are like, Hey, I give you credit for going back because they were shut down for two months and you really didn't get a good taste oh of it. And I was God. like, eh, uh, I was addicted pretty quickly. <laughs> what a time. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 I mean, what a, what a time, interesting time, you know, like yeah. these last couple of years with COVID and just the graduations that we had and just the things that we had to deal with, right. With, you know, health departments and, you know, just, you know, mandates, those, those kinds of things. So, and, you know, and I just decided that, you know, what at the beginning we closed cause we didn't know. Right. And sure, yeah. I, I, you know, I want to do the right thing to protect my community. Right. Sure, and, yeah. right on. and then uh, once we kind of, you know, there were, there were the, these big protests here in LA. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, tens of thousands of people. Right. And uh, uh, you know, and then they were, you know, they're talking about riding here in, in Burbank and we stayed here all night uh, just because we weren't sure. We have a lot of police, right? Obviously that train here, and LAPD, different, different police departments. Nice. And, uh, and uh, the Burbank police department did really great, you know, but, um, but uh, we're just like, you know, man, let's just, uh, let's just uh, keep open up. You know, I, I had a meeting with the staff and the coaches and everything. And we just, we just decided, I was like, yeah, we're in. And I count us in. We were just over it, you know. Sure. Uh, and then, uh, and then they actually decided here in uh, in California, at least, that we could open up. And they played with us. They let us open up for maybe two, three weeks, and then they said we had to close again. Mm. Uh, except we didn't close after that. We just stayed open. <laughs> just stayed open. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is, <clears throat> I mean, it's your livelihood. You know, like that's you know, something. It's my livelihood, right? But it's also like it was the right thing in my heart. Sure. That was the right thing for the community. 
for example, you know, here, you know, I'm close to Hollywood and I'm and, and in the middle of the entertainment industry, right? And a lot of people like actors and just the whole industry, right? Uh, everybody lost their whole way of life, right? 100%, uh, and the yeah. only consistent thing that they had was, was us, right? They were like, you know, everybody's, you know, going crazy, right? Home At home, at, you know, there's no work, you know, no work, you know, what do you do? And so it was the only <clears> consistent <throat> thing that they had. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it was, it was, you know, it was pretty deep and, you know, like, you know, people taking drugs and drinking and, you know, suicides and, you know, there's, there's a lot of people man, you know? And so I just felt like that was the right thing to do. And that's not even talking about the kids. Sure. Some, yeah. kids, some kids, right. Yeah. Like they, uh, they, uh, you know, they had no social, social interacting some kids. Right. Yeah, yeah um, for sure. And so the only place that they had was at the gym. And so I wasn't going to take that away from them. And I just had to, you know, hold the line and, and you know, just do what I, th- I thought was right in my heart. And, you know, the people that came by, the health department people that came by, um, you know, they, they, they also knew, you know, they also kind of, you know, they're humans, right? It's like, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, 100%, yeah. Yeah. And they had to do their job. Right. Uh, it's just like, it was just a mess. <laughs> but everything was okay. And everybody's, everybody's really cool considering, right. Of everybody's jobs and sure. you know, other things that they had to do. And, and uh, we got through it, right. We got through it and, now we have the Omegatron variant, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know, I know, yeah. I know. It's crazy. Uh, is the, the gym still? Get, you're still plugging away, then, right? Doing, yeah, we're doing plugging good. away, and and uh, and uh, luckily, you know, we're kind of back to normal, and you know, good. people, people want to do it, and you know, I kind of remember like you know the first whatever month or what the first month, right? Like first couple of weeks, and then uh, probably like about a month in, you know, people were like, "Hey, can we?" A couple of people were like, "Hey, can I can I train?" You know started with like two people and then three people and then four people and they were like training in the dark right it was like, <laughs> right, right. Fight yeah. club, called the fight club 2020 yeah and uh and then uh, my wife because we have a little restaurant too and uh she went to do like like laundry there's like a little wash machine in, in the corner on that on that side of the gym and then she's like she looked she turned like there she saw her noise and then she looked up and there's like you know, 20 people in the room <laughs> everybody hide <laughs> It was an interesting time, you know, but I'm yeah. uh, really grateful for our community because they've been uh, such a great support uh, for us. And, you know, we definitely catered to those people. And like, I, I just try to be understanding with everybody and where they're at. And sure, and I just care about I'm team human. Right. And I want to I want everybody to win and I want everybody to do good. And it's tough. You know, it's tough. Right. With uh, just, you know, all this all these different mixed messages, right? It's very, it's very yeah. difficult now, um, more than it's ever been. And we're, we're all roughly around the same age. And, and you're what, Alberta, you're 45, right? 45, correct. Yeah, I'm, I'll be 45 in May. And Chad is the veteran. The elder statesman. The elder I'll be, statesman. Yeah, I'll be 47 later this year. That's why, that beard. That's why year, that beard's yeah. like this. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but you've been around a long time. So you've seen a lot of different things throughout the world and uh, in the country and stuff. So when you sit back, you think, man, a lot of people are all over the place. You know, there is no happy medium. It's like, you're, you're either over here or you're over here and it's unbelievable. So, yeah. you know, like I'm sure dealing with that out there, but, but good on you, man, for like, you recognize things and you see it and you can hear, you know, the way that you talk and stuff. And I, and I know your background and, and hearing you speak and stuff, whatnot. And for the community to understand that people need an outlet, people need something yeah, where they yeah. can go because you're hundred percent right. When you're trapped all the time or, yeah. and I say trapped, you're doing what you feel is best for you and your family. Mm-hmm. So you're not, I mean, I mean and I, I, I'm talking about other people, like I'm talking about, you know, I say my, my health too, my mental health too. Sure. Yeah. hundred percent. Right. It's yeah. like a way of life for me. It's like my whole life. And I, I mean, I mean, at that, at the beginning part, right. There was like, I saw an article on Bloomberg that said uh, prostitution is legal, but judo and wrestling is illegal. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's <laughs> tough, man. man. It's tough. You know, so, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and but well, basically like my, my life, you know, my whole life is, you know, in a way, like, I mean, it's the opposite of social distancing. Sure. Right. Right. You, right. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. you can't, you can't <laughs> social, what we do. You, there's no such thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, you make a choice and, you know, I think everybody that comes in here, like if you have a situation that you're nervous about, like definitely don't come in, but sure. there's a lot of people that, that needed to. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I, I just, you know, I felt that and, and, you know, um, um, you know, just follow my heart. Right. And yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and it's just hard to sit still. Right. As long as we've done this, it's like, 
you know, I've had, I had a few people like, man, this is, you probably feel your body's resting up. And I'm like, no, like, I feel like I ache more when I'm not rolling consistently, right? Like your body just gets stiff. You're used to being, you're used to being loose. You know, that, that stress, right. You know, just with the tack with stuff, you know, I learned about some of those things and just the stress response, right. You know, you're, I mean, like the fight or flight response, Mm -hmm. right. Lowers your immune system to get, you know, all of your, everything goes into, being able to run away from the saber tooth tiger. Right. Yep. And so, so us training and moving and exercising and being around others too, right. That improves our immune system. So if we do get hit with something, right. Uh, you know, we're, we're okay. You know, yep. uh, we're best. And that's really like the best thing that we can do for ourselves and uh, for society is to take care of our health. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and you just is such a great, uh, such a great tool for, for that developing discipline and character. And, you know, I mean, you know, everything. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. And, and, and how much, and we've all had that, um, like, man, I don't think I want to train tonight. I'm not feeling good. I got a right. headache. And then yeah. you roll and it's like after class, you're like, man, I'm glad I did that. Yeah. 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 You know, it's happened so many times. It does. It's a, not a common occurrence, but you know, I'm like, I'm old and I'm tired and I don't well, want to there's, do there's this. also rest. There's also rest nights. But, I'm just kidding. Cause I'm pretty much like, Oh, well, like the other night I told Chad, I'm just going to roll once and then I'm going to get out of here. And now I several, yeah, ro- several rolls later, everyone was done. We're hanging out. I was like, Oh yeah. Well, I was supposed to leave like 30 minutes ago, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, Oops. It keeps, it keeps you young, it keeps you healthy. Yeah. yeah. It keeps you happy. And because of that, because you're happy, you're just a better person Yeah. because of, you know, winning or, or tapping out, right. Having to sure. step out. It just makes you a better person. Right. And you just act better with everybody that you're around. Right. Right. Uh, so it's just, yeah, that's no the, what. like you bring up the uh, like tapping out, Roberto. The uh, it seems like a misconception, like in the community, like oh, if you tap out, like you're not rolling hard enough, or you're not doing this hard enough. And, and you know, Chad, and he's my coach, so Chad is my coach, <laughs> and he all the time, it's like be smart, like tap and r- move on, or keep going, or you know, flow roll and tap, and then go into something else and keep moving. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's a misconception still, like in BJJ still? Uh, as far as what just like tapping, tapping out like people like are always like bad, like it being a bad thing you know right? and this is i mean man you know it's like <clears> right like, that's a that's a great question and uh and i think it's a very deep question right because uh you know when you're younger you have you know a huge ego you're trying to prove well i'm i'm just i'm thinking about myself like you want to prove something that you sure. know you're good you're that you know, especially you're a competitor like you know and you want to, you want to, you don't want to tap. Right. 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 Uh, kind of when you put everything into something like, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, that, that you definitely don't want to tap. You want to, you don't want to show that, you, you know, but yeah, definitely. Like you learn by, by tapping and that, that I wish I would have known or had a better mindset when I was younger Yeah. Uh, to, to be able to, it's okay to tap, right. To learn. Right. Sure. Uh, uh, in, in, in training, especially with your, with your training partners, and that's how you learn, right? You're like, oh, I made a mistake. I should, you know, and then you pick up on that. Um, and I think, uh, I think, I think, you know, like I said, I wish I would have had that mindset more when I was younger, but mm-hmm. now I definitely do. Like, you know, I just try to train and in a smart way, right? Mm-hmm. Because I don't need to be, you know, cranking out my arms and sure, hurt, right. yeah. hurting myself, you know? Um, it's not necessary. I want to be able to train uh, and do this, you know, for the rest of my life, uh, in a, in a good way without, you know, without pain, I want to be able to live, live yeah. without pain and yeah. the quality yeah. of life. Yeah. And I think I, I've said on a couple podcasts, we always talk about how jujitsu has progressed over the, say the last 20 years, right. It's just growing and growing and growing. But I think what is even better is how we take care of our people now. Right. Exactly. Like my, my first class, I got heel hooked really quick. Nobody said, Hey, if something hurts, you might want to tap. You know, now we're taking care of our new students and like, hey, right. this is what's allowed. This is what's not. And that's a business side of things, too, I guess. But no, I mean, l- listen, like, right, like the the what I explain people like in the 90s and early 2000s and 2000s, let's just be real. Yeah. Um, it, um, it was uh, uh, it was Fight Club, right? It was kind of yeah. like Fight Club. Um, only the strong survived. And uh, it's OK, business, but 
it's the right thing, right? It's mm-hmm. the right thing yeah, for, sure. For everybody, right? Um, <clears throat> we want more people training. We want more people benefiting from jujitsu. Um, and that's the right. And even for like the tough guys, it's, it's good to have that environment, right? Because we Absolutely. Are, everybody's interconnected and we need that support as well. So I'm really happy that, you know, it's, it's gone that way, more professional, right? In a more professional way. For sure. Uh, do you guys watch uh, Cobra Kai? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. At and, least. You know, and, and, yeah. I've already finished the fourth season. Fourth season. I haven't started exactly. it yet. No, I haven't started <laughs> the new season yet. <laughs> I yeah. have I've already watched I've, it. I've been, t- I've been telling people, <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> you know, it's, it's nice, right? Because like the, you know, older generation, they can appreciate, they get nostalgic and it's, they, they do such a great job, right? With sure. connecting all the things. And, uh, and then the young, you know, the, the kids, like they, they, they love it. Right. Too. So it's really nice to connect everything. But the interesting thing with Cobra Kai, I think is, uh, you know, I did a lot of like when I was, you know, I was trying to figure out how am I going to, how am I going to make a living or, you know, speaking of the fight club days, sure. how am I gonna, you know, build a business or how am I going to be able to do this and make a living and have a family, support a family. And so I, you know, I studied with karate guys and Taekwondo guys, like how to do the business things. Right. Mm-hmm. And they always told the story of uh, the Karate Kid and how it saved the martial arts industry, because which was like around 1984. Because before that, it was like it was like Fight Club. It was right. like hardcore. There was wasn't no any training. There were yeah. any kid, there were no kids, right? And so uh, so then I, the 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 Karate Kid really changed things, right? It's kind of saved. They they say like saved the martial arts sure. industry. Um, and so uh, I appreciate you know it's it's cool to to have that come back now after all these years and it's cool that we have jujitsu now right yeah uh, and uh, it's it's funny like my my i have, I have uh three kids and twin twin girls they all do jujitsu but they they've been nice. like karate fight pretend karate fighting you know because <laughs> they watch the show you know <laughs> you show do they get they watch some old stuff like you, you bring them back to some nostalgic um, stuff i think like some yeah we watched stuff? we watched a few a few of the that we watched the first one yeah i watched the okay. first one and maybe the second one yeah, it's cool. It's cool because uh, what's his name? The uh, the ponytail, uh, the bad pony. Um, uh, I know who you're talking about, but uh, I, I don't. I can't think of his name. The, the Terry Seville. Seville. Terry uh, Ter- Terry Silver's. Yeah. Silver. Yeah. Terry Silver. Yeah. 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 So so he, I gave yeah, I gave him his blue belt uh, here at the gym. Oh no, so, kidding! Yeah, That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, really cool. Some years back, and he you know he, he had to kind of stop training just because of injuries and stuff. Sure. But it's cool because he's a legit martial artist, right? He trained with a friend of mine and. He's like, yeah, he's used to jujitsu to switch it up, and he did jujitsu, and he really trained, a really good athlete. So it's just cool. To that see was pretty cool when when they brought him in to the new season. That was one of the first things. Like I actually, you know, I remembered him from before, and you hey. know, he, he he turned, uh, um, you know, uh, what's his name um, <laughs> into into Cobra Daniel. Kai, whatever Daniel. Yeah, Daniel yeah. Um, yeah. So it was cool when they brought him back because I was like, oh, that's awesome that he is, was willing to come back into this yeah. show and, and be a part of it. And it looks like he's going to be a part of it going forward for at least yeah. a while. Well, I but, saw him like a couple of years back and he was saying, you know, because he, he was just a writer and he got out yeah, of acting. Right. He got After, out of acting. Yeah. He, told me. he got out of acting just because he's that's not my thing, you know, I, just, I like sure. to write and do that. And I'm sure they, you know, just the, uh, I mean, it blew up, right? Cobra Kai yeah. the show. It was on, do you yeah. remember it was on YouTube at the beginning? Yeah. Was, yeah. On the very, Netflix, very beginning. And then Netflix picked them up and they became the number one show on Netflix. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now everybody's talking cool about that. Yeah. Kids yeah. now are getting to see, I'm like, Hey, this is like, goals. I go, even though, cause some people still joke and be like, do you do, you do karate? And I'm like, it's not karate. It's jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, come yeah. here. Let me show you, uh, show you a wrist lock real quick. <laughs> it's simple and it's going to hurt. <laughs> Right, but it's, it's cool like in a way like it's karate and we laugh you know like uh you know but the the concepts right and the you know just the the pride and just the character thing is it's the same right? oh 100 yeah. percent. it's really cool because my one of my daughters likes to compete and so it's really cool that i can connect to her on on the level you know like oh you're rep- representing and, like your school and you know yeah. just stand up proper and you know like all the things that they right. that they they kind of do in the show one of the things i remember that I like kind of loved. I think it was like the first season or uh, Miguel, right? He, uh, yeah. he has, he's like, I have asthma. And he grabs his inhaler and throws it against the wall. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <And breaks. laughs> it's like, he's like, not no more. Right, you know? Not no. no more. I know. You're like, okay. Wow. Then. <laughs> when I'm running and huffing and puffing, I'm just going to fall down. <laughs> <I'm not> just... <laughs> yeah, but if it's you're like, it's yeah. like mind over matter. Right. And right. Uh, that's what martial arts teaches you. And uh, yeah, just, just, I don't know if you, uh, I related to that, you know, it's like, man, we're so sure. much, we're much more capable than we think. And, 
you know, that's one of the things and yeah, that I picked up on and I, I, I love it. You know, I, I just, I get bought, I got bought in on so many different things with the, with the show and that's I, awesome. Love, love watching it with my kids. Yeah. That's cool too, because you have an opportunity to watch with your kids. So you get to share it of yeah. stuff that you grew up with. And then, right, you right. know, they, so they, they're, I don't even say rebooting it. They just extending the life of it. So you, you know, you grew up and you've seen it. So now your kids get to see it. So they get to see that part of it. And you're right. Like the translation of humility and honor <clears throat> and just being respectful and, you know, something I tell people like with jujitsu, I was like, you would never think that was going to be a part of it because of what you end up doing when you get there and you're trying to choke people and armbar people. But I said, you become, it's the biggest family or the greatest, closest family you will ever get in your life. It's something you can't experience until you're involved with it. Right. Um, you know, so it's always hard to explain to people outside, but to each their own, I'm yeah. in and I'm in for life. So I have to get a walk. There's a book called Tribe. There's a book called Tribe, you know, okay. and it really helped me understand uh, just kind of what I do with uh, with jujitsu, really. You know, um, he had another book called War. Um, uh, man, is it Younger? Younger, Younger, the author. But he has a book. It was about Vietnam veterans. And, and so Tribe is about, you know, belonging and, and you know, that we're, we're, you know, we need our tribe, you sure. know. Yeah. And we can live, you know, I live in Los Angeles with 10 million people but I can be totally disconnected from everybody. But jujitsu gives us that sense of belonging and tribe. And I think it's, uh, it's very important, you know, especially as we go more and more digital, digital, yeah. yes. you know, yeah. meta, metaversity, meta, metaversity, right? <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> right, I uh, know. Social media and everything else, right? We, we're connected, but we're disconnected. And right. jujitsu nice. is, uh, is something we, I don't know, you guys, uh, Tried to do anything virtual with jujitsu, but it doesn't work, right? No, <laughs> I couldn't imagine. Like my wife and I were just talking about that. Like we were joking about how, you know, clothes or, or themes or um, stuff comes back around. Um, we were talking about music. She's like, oh man, I can't wait till CDs come back. And I was like, honey, CDs aren't coming back because it's technology. I was like, mm -hmm. technology never comes back around. I go, it always goes. I'm like, but everything else might come back around. Like the way we do something or in a martial art, like jujitsu, there was something that was really, really big Alberta when you started. And then maybe it phased out and some other jujitsu became more popular in terms of moves and whatnot. And now maybe some of that stuff's coming back, you right. know, more and more. So, right you know, that's what we live yeah, in correct. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But technology, right. Is, uh, it's changing so fast. We don't even see it. And then you have yeah. the AI, the artificial intelligence and, you know, you start listening to the same, some of these, uh, uh, futuristic guys like Ray Kurzweil and stuff. It yeah. Kinda, oh yeah. It's kind of creepy and a little bit crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, definitely. I kind of stopped watching. I don't know if you know, who you know, who Greg Kurzweil, he's like a future futuristic guy. He has a yeah. he's kind of coined the singularity uh, uh, term, where basically we merge with, uh, you know, our brains. Our so brains. Yeah. yeah, I've heard of this before. Um, my son's fourteen, and he's very. I'll say he's very much in the technology and computer science and all kinds of stuff. So, mm -hmm. which is him and I are not yeah. opposite, but I know. What yeah, you're you know, about. so I, I maybe like about five years ago, I was you know I was really I was I was studying a lot of AI and and him and these things he was saying and. Then I stopped, I stopped like reading about it and you know, like, you know, listening to it just because it was making me sad. It was making me feel like, like we're not important, you know? Anymore. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. we're going to basically create our own, our own, you know, species, right. With robots, with, with technology, right. Yeah. Going forward. Like we're going to obsolete ourselves. Correct. Based, based right. off what we're doing. We're not going to have kids anymore. We're right. Gonna just turn ro robots are going to be like, you know, people right. and citizens and all that. Is that better? Right. Um, and so I stopped listening to that and <clears throat> there was this other futuristic guy named George Gilder. Okay. I never heard of this guy. Yeah. He, he's a futuristic guy. And, uh, I saw some podcast or some, some just, uh, uh, clip and, and basically, and he has a book called life after Google, <laughs> the end of big tech and the emergence of oh. blockchain economy. Oh hmm. wow! Okay, and I was like, "Oh, interesting," you know. So I got it and I I read it and uh, and uh, super interesting, right? And uh, he basically is like, "There's always going to be a form of you know of, of us humans in in the technology, right? Mm -hmm. Just because of it is." And you know, he's kind of giving the example of you know communism, like we were we thought like the industrial revolution was the apex of you know humanity, but it wasn't, right? Like things things evolved, and you know, 
And so same thing with this, we think that, you know, we've, we've, you know, then, you know, with AI and all this, like created the apex, but it's like not being humble, right. To sure. billions, billions of years of evolution. And so, uh, I like that. And then if you watch the new matrix, I don't know if you guys can, the new <laughs> yeah, matrix, I, yeah. what happens? We merge with technology, we merge right? With yeah. technology. Yeah. And <clears throat> humanity with, with the technology. And so that seems, uh, that I like that. And, and, and that's, uh, I'm okay with that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> have you, uh, have you ever watched Westworld on HBO? I did. I did. I watched yeah. it. Yeah. It becomes, yeah. I mean, it's not anyone out there listening. If you've never heard of it, do not, watch it with kids around <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of dark i, I kind of yeah. i've watched i like maybe like one season or you know one of the things and it's like dark and you know but uh yeah it's right it's very much like that like just AI, AI, yeah yeah AI and stuff and living around like the, the the black mirror right yeah exactly yeah <laughs> i want to kind of see some of the things that they were doing but you know it's going to be part of our our reality right it's just going to be, I mean, it's inevitable, yeah. like where everything's going, but I think martial arts will always stay true to its form, be, mm-hmm. not just because of what it is, but it's because of the people like yourself, Chad, other people, other guests we have any, everyone and anyone that's doing any form of martial art, it'll probably always stay true to it because once you get involved with it, you're so humble and you begin to want to understand it more and you want to give that information to people as you're going forward. So if all else fails, we'll yeah. have martial arts forever. Yeah. It connects us, right? It connects us. Sure. It know? does. The, the, we have those chips, right? Those Neuralink chips and things like that. You guys gonna, are you guys going to do the chip? I, I don't know. I, I don't, it's, I'm not sure. I probably won't because I'm older and I'm probably like, no, I'm not going to do that. Now my kids Download are probably like, that, sure. Become a, become a black belt in like right. 20 seconds. <laughs> yes, <that's, laughs> like in the matrix. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's you know, that's going to be some kind of weird future thing too. just see it. You're just going to be at like, the, oh. at all the lapel games, you know? And, yeah. And in like five seconds, 10 seconds. That's what the instructionals will be. Like right? you'll just yeah. buy a chip to download into yourself and you'll be like, I know Kung Fu, I know Jiu Jitsu. Right? And I'll be right, like, hang right, it. Right, right. And then yeah. there'll be other people that still exist. And they'll be like, I spent my whole life doing this. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are down. Interesting. So. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I think about, I know we're going on like a crazy tangent. Oh, it's all right, man. Thing. Yeah. But uh, like the, the, you know, like jobs and stuff, right? Like what's going to happen with jobs and AI and, technology replacing humans right sure and uh one of the jobs right that i think you know we can't make a robot for is jujitsu right well not not in the foreseeable the future sun, right sure right um but uh so it's, it's that's that's just because it's it's so deep and it's so things that we probably don't even not probably things we don't understand right how we work um, you know, how everything works. We think, right. But the sure. best guys, the highest level guys, they, they, they're <laughs> to say like, we think, but we don't know. We don't know anything. Sure. No belt, no right. belt prize, uh, you know, level guys. Yeah. A hundred percent. Did you always feel like that? Even after you got your black belt, like there was still, there's never a ceiling. There's a, you're always learning, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, I remember, uh, when I got my black belt, uh, so, you know, I, you know, I, when I was younger, so I, I started doing jujitsu, right? When I started at that restaurant and then my friend went to Brazil and we started training in his garage and took me to a couple tournaments, a mall Easton, right? Uh, took me a couple tournaments. He has like, you know, um, nine gyms and 4,000 students in Colorado. Oh, uh, awesome. I was going to ask you if you're still friends with him. So that, yeah, that's, yeah. Easton, that's super he's awesome. He's one of my best friends and they do an amazing job out there. Elliot Marshall, you know, and, and awesome. all, their, all their team. Um, and uh, and uh, and moved down to Brazil for six months, and then uh, competed more and just got deeper. But he told me about this book before I moved down there, uh, called "Think and Grow Rich" by Napoleon Hill. Okay, if you guys have heard of that? You know, no, I have not. Uh huh. And uh, it's like one of the first self help books, right? And uh, Andrew Carnegie got uh, the author Napoleon Hill, like all these interviews with the most successful people in in the world at the time. Okay. And they had these same the same characteristic characteristics, you know. Uh, and he wrote that, he put all those things down in a book, you know, and, uh, you know, write, writing your goals down, like just all the, the things that go along with that. Right. And, uh, auto suggestion, you know, like, you know, masterminding. And, and so I wrote all those things down, my goals and what I wanted. And so that, that, that took me down to Brazil and that's how I kind of went down and, uh, set some goals for myself and competed and, you know, I kind of, 
had in a way was was all right or heading in that direction but it got me laser focused and it really helped me um stay focused to uh when things don't go your way right sure that yep. you, you set out to do um and uh and uh yeah it's uh helped me in, in other things and, and do you still forward. do that now do you still write stuff down Yes, I do. Yeah. And I still read the book, you know, uh, I go on uh, road trips, whatever with, um, go to, I go see my mom usually in, I go to New Mexico usually for Christmas and nice. we, I always like just kind of pop it on and just read the chapter and be like, Oh, okay. That's what he means. And, you know, I think about things a little bit different <clears throat> parts of your life. Yeah. So it's pretty crazy. You know, that I've been reading a book for, uh, I don't know, <laughs> it's, 20, it's 20, 20, 25 years, you know, I uh, love it. Us. Um, it's huge because I've told our listeners and I talk about it and um, personally to people all the time about don't ever sell yourself short to think you can't learn something. And if there is a book or something that you can have and you can listen to multiple times or over a period of time and get something out of it all the time, then do it because you're only going to better yourself mm -hmm. and it builds your mindset. So I tell people, all the time, like write down stuff, write it down and write it and read it and think about it and make it happen. Because if you don't write it down, you're going to tend to forget about it unless it's something that just consumes you all the time, but write it down so you can see it, set that goal, put it in stone, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. and you, that's and that's awesome to hear that you, that you still do that. And, uh, it's, it's, it's so critical in life and it teaches you and helps you become better, a better person and have a better mindset especially like what's going on now that we've talked about earlier, you know, you got to have a strong mindset or people that can help others to get a strong mindset by doing stuff like that. Yeah. You know? So that's awesome, man. Do you, uh, do you teach your students that way too? Um, as far as, yeah, I mean, I, like I in that kind I, of direction, like mindset wise. Yeah, for sure. Like it's, you know, what's your goal? I, I just talk to people like on one-on-ones and, you know, just sure. Yeah. Like their goals are and what, you know, what they want. And then I try to I definitely try to get to know people. And uh, maybe they don't think I'm doing that, but, you know, maybe subconsciously like it gets you thinking at least like, oh, what mm -hmm. is my goal? You know, what do I, what do I want? You know? Um, um, and I think it gets you focused. Right. And uh, instead of just want aim aimlessly wandering, you get like, you know, more focused and laser more focused. focused sometimes. Yeah. 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 And so you're more uh, intentional with uh, hopefully with uh, your daily life and, and, and everything that you do, just because we think we're going to be around forever. We kind of, Right. I'm saying myself too. Right. But you take for granted and <laughs> before we know, we're, <laughs> right. Uh, right. 45. Right. Uh, I blink and then <laughs> blink again. We're 65 and, you know, so just enjoying every day and giving everything you have right with, uh, with, with yourself you know, to help others. Yeah. A hundred percent. I wanted to circle back. You said, so uh, I don't know, this that doesn't have fully because of where you're located, but you have a lot of police officers or law enforcement that say law right. enforcement, um, right. people who train with you. Is it something that they just come in or was it like, how did you build up that? Because we have a lot that train at our gym as well. And I'm, Chad and I are always curious, like what's bringing those in? Has it been over time? Um, you know, I, I, I used to live in New Mexico, right? And so I started my, my first gym 22 years ago. And we always had like, I feel like police officers, but uh, um, um, yeah, just with time, right. They tell other, other police officers sure. that it's a good place, right. It's a, it's a, it's a good place to learn. It's a good place to train um, and just word of mouth. Right. Um, I think that that's really like the strongest point, right. Sure. You have a friend that, you know, fellow officer uh, training there. So, and then people just find us, right? And then they stay, they stay because it's a good place and, sure. and tell others. Yeah. So I think over time, for sure. Yeah. I think it's awesome that more, um, you know, LEOs are embracing the encouragement to train at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu um, mm -hmm. because they can deal with people so hands on, you know, yeah. in, in their line of work. <clears throat> and it's always, you know, obviously in the times that we live and the things that have happened. I think it's always great to hear. That's why I asked. Like, yeah, it's it's great. It's a crazy situation, right? With, uh, you know, the things that, that they've had to deal with, right? As well, these last oh, few years, one hundred percent. And, yeah. uh, and uh, yeah. man, like, in a way, like, it should almost be required for them to do jujitsu. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> right, because it's a it's a it's such a danger for them and others, and not even just the combat skills that they gain, gain but 
their mindset, speaking of mindset, right? Mm-hmm. Their, their ability to handle st- stress in a situation, right? And to make the right decision under stress, right? If you're in, somebody's on top of you in side control, like, you know, a guy that's 300 pounds, if you panic and, you know, you're going <laughs> you know, to probably tap out, right? You're going to have to give up. If you're I'm relaxed, <laughs> right. you're relaxed, right? Okay, I can do this. Okay, breathe make your move. Right. Uh, so I think it's similar, right. Uh, just to make, be able to stay calm under pressure to make the right decisions, uh, for, for everybody's safety. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I know, I know. And, and, uh, I think in Abu Dhabi, uh, that they have to be, to be an officer, you have to be a black belt in jujitsu. Really? Oh, wow. wow. Like military and I'm not sure the police, but you know, I heard that wow. they have like a whole city, right. Of, uh, black belts and stuff of, of, of coaches, right. Professors. That's awesome. Right? Mm-hmm. and People they teach do- it in this they teach it in the schools too so they gonna, start young schools, oh right? do they really yeah. Wow. yeah wow that's amazing um how does something like that get pulled off like how do they do it they just implement it from a <laughs> from a from a government standpoint or are they just like i mean the sheik the sheik uh to whom right he was uh you know he got his black belt and so it's him um you know his his uh him putting it in him implementing it into and the just school saying we're doing and this, i think yeah. that's huge yeah he's like you know this is the right way and that's huge right that's yeah. huge what uh what an amazing gift that he can give to his uh his yeah and, and those people grow up differently in a good way not, and i'm not saying everyone anyone's growing up badly i mean there are tons of people that uh, have unfortunate situations but we understand that what that brings to you a martial art in general but jujitsu specifically brings you so much growth and a mindset and it, it prepares you for success, failures, all kinds of things. You really ride a wave of stuff. So if you can learn that at a young age, uh, good on them. I mean, that's a yeah. huge accomplishment yeah. <clears throat> for, yeah. you know, to teach in schools. And, yeah. you know, we have what there's uh, down in Georgia, I believe, uh, Chad, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't there a um, a station down there that it is required? Um, they do. There's a P- yeah, there's a PD. And I think it's Georgia. I think that, it is. That, uh, yeah. Yeah. That requires their guys to do jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. But it, is, yeah, some, yeah. I don't know all the details of it, but, sure. but like yeah. Alberta said, I think it's the, the jujitsu in general is growing. Right. And that word of mouth is huge because I mean, we've all, and I've talked about it with our officers that there's a lot of ego in, in the, in the police department. Right. Or in that, because you're, you're this, in, you're this in society and you're going to come into the gym and that 130 pound dude is going to kick your butt. Right. So there's a lot of that. Even yeah. more, I think, but uh, yeah, yeah, true should be, that should, should be, um, should be, uh, should be mandatory, right? Absolutely, I, mean, I can't, uh, I, I can't imagine crazy because I mean, yeah. UFC is a mainstream sport now, and you have you know people that they have to deal with, they, they're learning these, these things, right? They see it on TV, they understand what the mount is, what the guard is, yeah. we're not in, mm-hmm. we're not in, you know pre-UFC days anymore we're not in early UFC days we're like in mainstream UFC days right and yeah. so it's uh it's yeah it's <clears throat> uh, and the, and and those are the guys we have those are the guys that are hard to deal with that really don't you know like I always tell people like I'm 150 pounds right I'll be 47 years old this year mm-hmm. obviously I want my jujitsu to be as good as it can mm-hmm. but I test my jujitsu on that 210 pound white belt that just walked in mm-hmm. Because that, if I get into a situation in the street, it's probably going to be something like that. Or if I have to defend myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. Yeah. 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 That's it. You know, that's it. Um, yeah. But just doing it right is, uh, yeah. is key, right? Just showing up and just doing it. 100%. Um, yeah. It uh, should be mandatory in a way. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm mm-hmm. not the. No, I mean, everything else that most, you know, officers do is mandatory. You got to, you know, firearms and. Sure. To help you know cpr and all that you know all that i mean stuff. it's just crazy right with the stuff that they've had to deal with right and just not being supported you know on different on putting their lives at risk right and not being supported and you know you put the, you have these these politicians like in new york for example making these rules yeah. they right. have no idea these are, the, these are the guys putting the necks on the yeah. line to protect us yeah. and the fact that they're just making these rules with when they have no idea what they're talking about yeah sure 100 like, yeah. percent. It's, it's, it's unbelievable you're taking a ro- taking away the wrong tools right 100 percent. right yep. and pushing them towards the one you don't want them to use <laughs> right, right. yeah right yeah so. that's, that's speaking of uh deadly forest right yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. jiu-jitsu yeah. really yeah. is the it is the gentle it art. is the gentle art right give yeah. options you don't have to hurt somebody or kill somebody right 
You yeah. can really control them and uh, do deal with somebody the most uh, humane way possible. It's sure. really, uh, it's amazing, right? If, yeah. uh, but if you can't, be, you can't use it, you can't apply it or you, you can't know, write. You're right. That's, uh, that's, 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 that's yeah. a big problem. You know, that's, uh, yeah. that's you don't, you don't know what you don't hurt. know. <laughs> and if, you well know, said. and you're not yeah. willing, and if they're not willing or, or upper, you know, management or whatnot's not going, Oh, we should actually be doing this for everybody. Cause you're only doing a favor. You're extending their mind <clears throat> better and you're giving them satisfaction to believe in themselves instead of mm-hmm. believing in another tool as, as Chad mm-hmm. stated, because if you weren't trained in anything other than that, yeah, I would probably rely on that tool just mm-hmm. as much as what you see, not, you know, across the board. I'm not saying it's everything is the same, but, but you know what I mean? So yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> uh crap yep i totally blanked out what i was gonna i was gonna ask alberto a question about uh training but i just can't remember what it was jeez See, this is what happens when i get old and i just start talking about something else and i'm like terry come back to that and then i don't because i forget <laughs> but i always i always openly honest about it so i'll do it. how much training do you get to do now you know i just try to be consistent and okay. just try to move and, uh, um, you know, like the tack fit, you know, so it's going to actually, yeah. yeah, the tack fit really helps me stay in shape. You know, it's just like I'm in fight shape pretty much like I can compete. I can do whatever I want for as long as I do tack fit. Sure. Um, so it's been a big blessing and it just allows me to, uh, balance out my body, mm-hmm. uh, with just because we do a pretty balanced routine. Right. You know, in jujitsu, for example, we grab, grab, grab. We're in flexion of our bodies, right? And so after time, your body adapts to that. And then guess what? It's hard for you to open up your hands and grab the ground with your hands open. Mm-hmm. It's hard to open up your body because your body of body has adapted to that form, right? Um, and so jujitsu, I mean, uh, Takfa really helps me balance myself out uh, from the years of jujitsu and then also allows me to just stay healthy uh, to do jujitsu. Mm-hmm nice yeah and also it goes even deeper right like you know just talking about the structure of the body right and which sure. really balance but also like our breath you know um like just connecting your breath with the movement and that those things transfer directly to the mat so i love it for myself of course but it's it's been really amazing to see the students because i've been doing it now here for about five years nice it's okay gym, yeah. and it's really nice to see the students apply it to themselves uh, and improve their jujitsu because they start to understand better structure. And, you know, it's cool. We had uh, Henry Aikens come out like some while back, you know, and, you know, Henry, yeah, I think he's, Henry, I think he's Hickson, like Hickson's like top coach. Top, mm-hmm. like, sure. Top yeah. Black belt, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah top I think belt. so. You know, it's just a uh, st- uh, top instructor. Um, um, not to be, <laughs> he has a lot of great, great guys, but, uh, um, um, and so it's nice because he's talking about concepts and things and then people, people that do tack fit, they look at me, oh, it's like tack fit, you know? So you understand like the structure in the body. What, why do you have your elbows in, right? Because you engage your lats and, and you know, when you're, when you're on the bottom, you're, you know, trying to open up, if it's open guard, you're trying to open up their elbows, right? Because that makes them weaker. Sure. If you're on top and you're trying to pass the guard, you definitely don't want to have your elbows out. You want to have them in. So you're protected. Why? Because you're, when your elbows are in, your lats are engaged and you're strong in those positions. So it just teaches you a lot of things about the biomechanics. And then also the breath and then because, and then we also really focus on the quality of the movement. And so you get more awareness of self and your positioning. And I love one of the quotes from Marcelo Garcia, like anybody, if they work hard enough, right. They can be, you know, they can be the best or something, something like that. I sure. mess up that quote, but something like that. And I love it. Right. Because I love his uh, belief in people. Uh, but I think, <clears throat> I think, uh, I think you need to do the right training. You know, you need to do the quality training and these things allow somebody that's maybe not the best athlete to really get those pieces that they're missing to be able to learn the, the, you know, the techniques and the movements, you know, um, if they work hard and they do the work, they're going to get it. Um, so, so I always think about that Marcelo quote and then, uh, and then just Scott, Scott Sonnen, who's the founder of TACFIT, Mm -hmm. Uh, just his background, right? He was, uh, you know, dyslexic. He was diagnosed with learning disabilities. He was even institutionalized as a kid. 
Oh, wow. And uh, oh, because, wow. okay. because of his, uh, his, uh, you know, hardship just, or, you know, oh, okay. so he's different. He thinks different. Um, he, he, he really breaks things down to the most slimpest levels. He's like from another planet. If you ask me and people that, like, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. That's super that's, smart, super yeah. smart, like crazy smart guys. They're just like, what, you know, this guy's been saying these things for 25 years. This, the, the science didn't back it up yet, mm-hmm. but now the science, a lot of the science is backed up. Um, um, so, and he was just so far ahead. It was, he's still ahead in, in the system too, uh, what he was saying, but it's just nice to have some like that. It's science now. Right. Yeah. It's some like, you know, you, people call him a quack and crazy, but yeah, it's all, it was just all the right stuff. And then if you do it, you, uh, you know, you, you optimize yourself. Right. Um, you know, besides the performance and all that, just also you're, you're able to heal yourself. Right. With like a lot of these things, if you get injuries, you understand what to do. And then also, uh, you know, preventing injuries, right? Just making sure you're supple, right? Your body's supple and, sure. and your joints and ligaments and, you know, uh, skin and everything else, right? Is uh, <laughs> able to move properly, right? Uh, yeah. As you're uh, 40, 40 and plus, I think one of the top injuries is uh, ribs, right? Like uh, pop the ribs and, and pulling, mm. pulling the muscle, you know? And so just, you know, just getting in that awareness of the body. Uh, I love that we're able to help people with tack. I love jujitsu. So sure. of course, I'm very biased towards jujitsu, but what's beautiful about it is that even if you don't do jujitsu, it'll help you because structure, 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 <laughs> everybody right sits on. down too much. Right. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Our butt is off, you know, we got to activate the butt, you know, so like the lower back is protected and just, you know, we function properly, you know, and it's nice because it gives you those tools. <laughs> yeah. That was what, so that's, it's so fascinating. And I was so fascinating by tack fit hearing about it the first time. So, I mean, everyone out there knows, and if you don't know, you're going to know now that I do research on every guest that we're <laughs> going to have. And I go, went and looked, I watched that video where you, you know, you stood up and spoke and you, that's right. You talked about tack fit, you know, right. The, the Ted talk. Yeah. The Ted yeah. talk. Um, a great, awesome job, man. Uh, talking and speaking in front of people and um, good on you just to take the courage to stand up there and do that because for everyone out there and anyone that's never done anything like that, it's hard to do. It's very hard to stand up in front of people, not only to take, to talk about something that you're going through, but also to talk about something, you know, is working, <laughs> um, you know, so, because you get a lot of naysayers and whatnot, but yeah, sidetrack a little bit there, but anyway, the tech fit thing, I was fascinated because it's not just about working out, you know, like some people might be like, Oh, it's just, about working out, but it's not, it's more, uh, it's not just about that, but it's also, you know, like Alberto, you said the, the breathing part, it's about your nutrition, um, putting good in your body, taking care of yourself in other ways. Um, not just, you know, Hey, I eat clean or I eat good food. And, you know, I do this. It's not just that there's, it's actually way deeper, which you mentioned Alberto earlier. Um, and I'm sure you give a lot of credit to your, you know, the last many years, obviously of coming, you know, being able to, to still train jujitsu because you do. Right, tech exactly. Fit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know, like in 2012, right. I, in the, my Ted talk, I tell my story in 2012, they, they, they diagnosed me with multiple sclerosis and they, they showed me that lesions in my brain and they did some more neurological tests and then uh, treating me like my life was over and, sure. and gave me, you know, like, one of the doctors was like, oh, I'm probably going to end up in a wheelchair and gave me a stack of drug catalogs and asked me which, which, which ones I wanted to take, you know, mm-hmm. and all the nurses and everybody else treated me like, treated me like my life was, was going to be over. Right. And that's like a lot to take in. And, you know, part of the, I think the martial art mindset that jujitsu mind that's given me is just to not accept right defeat. You know? Yes. A hundred percent. I treated like I was defeated and my life was over. Um, um, but I asked, can I still do jujitsu? Can I compete in jujitsu? And he's like, sure. I was like, all right, that's cool. You know? And so I signed up and that's how I started. I went on a, on a world tour and I competed all over the world. I did one tournament in Vegas and just kind of got back into it. Cause I was only fighting MMA at the time. Mm, okay. And so it kind of gave me like, you know, um, um, you know, like a goal to work towards and, you know, and I think maybe, uh, uh, you know, not to, like I'm defeated, you know, I'm not defeated. Like it feels good to win, right. To get a gold medal. Right. Um, and, uh, but you have, I always had, I think in the back of my mind, my subconscious that, Hey man, what if I, this is my last, this could be my last tournament. This oh, be, sure. About yeah. Six months. Um, you know, I can't walk anymore or I can't, you know, do jujitsu anymore. Uh, what if, you know, what if, what if, and so I just went off and I went crazy and I did a world tour went all over the world. Like, <laughs> 
Europe, Asia, uh, uh, yeah, I, I even went to the Amazon. You know, wow, in Brazil, really? You know, I competed in Brazil, Manaus, you know. Um, I had competed in there in 10 years, in Brazil in 10 years. I went to Manaus, and yeah, man, it was it was really, uh, I was really grateful that I was able to do that, you know. But uh, I think I was trying to prove to myself that I can win, you know. And, yeah. uh, you know, people ask me, like, oh, what's, what's your, you know, achievement or uh, you know memories or whatever that you're proud of you know and, and i have to say like you know I, I, there was like a uh a, a tournament in spain so i did like three weeks three tournaments three weekend turn three weekends in a row one was like the nogi worlds one was in like berlin another one was in madrid because my friend was there doing a seminar and he asked hey let's do a seminar together he was one of my best friends um and so uh my last stop was in madrid and uh uh, I didn't feel good the night before I couldn't eat, you know, but I thought I was probably just stressed out from all the competing and the traveling sure. and I didn't think anything of it. And then I show up the tournament, it's the same thing in the morning. I couldn't really eat or drink, you know, and then I became friends with the first guy I was going to go with, you know, we went and then, uh, uh, I did my little move, you know, I got little points and then he made a move and then he dropped his weight on my stomach mm. and I was like, oh man, I'm going to throw up. And, uh, I didn't throw up. Uh, I held it in somehow and then uh, I lost the match by a couple of points, so, you know, and then got off the mat and I threw up in the trash can, you know, and I had full on food poisoning. Oh, uh, man. And so I was totally pale and, and it was uh, I was uh, three people in the bracket, you know, so there were yeah, two two matches. And so they're like, oh, you OK, man, after some time, you know, I was like throwing up. You know, like, you okay? You 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 okay to go? You know, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went, you know, and I was still in the match, you know, believe it or not. But I was totally out of it, right? If, you know, you imagine it's like the flu, right? Sure. And I ended up getting choked out in the match, and it was really, I was really like, I remember like waking up, and I had never been choked out. You know, it happens, right? Like, it happens sure. Oh yeah. Just, in my life, but I'd never been choked out ever, like in training or anything, right? Um, just one of those things. <laughs> And so it's kind of like, I was kind of super bummed out. I was out of it, you know, I was totally out of it when I, when, I, and, but I got choked out. And, and then the, my, the guy went against first, he asked me, uh, are you going to do the open weight? And, uh, and I was like, I don't know, man, you know, like, I'm, you know, kind of bummed out and, you know, it's like really like kind of sad. Right. Just, you know, <laughs> got choked out in Madrid. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, like, yeah. Feeling, you know, like what? The... And I remember sleeping, like oh, was, like I'm relaxed, like you know, I'm sleeping, you know. Um, and uh, and then and then he's like, I oh, just do it, man. Maybe you'll feel better uh, later, you know. And I was like, I thought about it, and I was like, man, what am I gonna do? Go back to the hotel and feel sorry for myself, or just stay here and feel like shit here, right? Sure, right. And so I stayed there, and I was like, okay, I'll put my name in. And then I sat, you know, you wait for a few hours, right? And I started uh, telling myself, uh, I believe in my technique. I couldn't drink or I couldn't eat anything. And I felt like crap, you know? Um, and I, I kept telling myself, like, I believe in my technique. And it started to feel good every time I said that. I believe in my technique. I believe in my technique. And I kind of said it for like hours, you know? And, uh, and it gave me the, just, I don't know, it made me feel good. And it, it, was, it was energy, right? Uh, uh, I got hormones released probably from, you know, sure. whatever I yeah. get, whatever I was saying in my head, my mantra. And I went and won my first match, had another one, second match, went for second match, won my third match. And I won the, it was the open weight, you know, so I won the open weight and even did a couple of matches, the nogi. And I was like, I was like, afterwards, I was like, I couldn't believe it, you know, that, uh, what I was able to do with nothing in the tank. And, um, you know, I think at that moment, subconsciously, I was like, man, I can win. You know what I mean? Like I can win this MS. Like I knew I can win. You can win. Yeah. I can That's win. Awesome, you know? I just knew like how powerful the mind is and the, what I was yep. able to do was just with mindset. Uh, I had nothing, right? No, no, no energy. No, felt like crap. You know, you've had the flu before, right? Food poisoning. Sure. Yeah. And just with the mindset. And I was like, I, I can, I can do this. And, uh, and then, uh, my subconscious took me to, uh, Scott's, uh, Scott Sonnen's, uh, tag fit, you know, certification. He had been inviting me for years. He helped me years ago in about 2007 for one of my UFC fights. Oh, okay. And, uh, he invited, he's always really kind to me. Always really like, you know, helped me out. He was a grappler, like, you know, super, super good, like leg locker, you know, crazy. He's so smart, man. And, uh, he invited me to assert. And so I finally, I went, you know, after all these years, my subconscious like go, go, you know, uh, to go to assert so i went to assert and i was like okay cool i get a second chance to do this and after like a week or 
you know, I, I just knew it was good for me. And the more I trained in it, the better I got. I, you know, I had all, I could, I broke my wrist. I had all these injuries, every, every joint in the body. Right. <laughs> uh, and um, from, from, you know, from fighting, competing, whatever uh, combined with uh, you know, the MS, you know, um, it was, I uh, was, I was a mess, you know, and uh, I started myself, started feeling better the more it trained. And so I just kind of started to put my foot on the, on the gas and started to, do uh you know every single thing that was on the schedule for TACFIT, you know it was <clears throat> rmax now it's tac you know tacfit tacfit.com sure but it's rmax anyway so i did everything that was on this on the schedule and i started it started changing my life i hadn't dreamt for like 10 years and my i started to dream again i was thick we use these club bells like these bats you know yeah so yeah we use we use everything right we use all the all the tools but that's like our, our scott invented the, the club bell so um so I just, that was my first dream was the club bells, like the technique, like lock, locking out my legs or whatever it was. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I had, had, if had issues with reading books too, I had, I used to read a lot when I was younger and there was probably like a 10 year period where I couldn't comprehend when I would read a book. Okay. Uh-huh. It was interesting. And I have people that have had ac- accidents and those kinds of things like uh, sure. car accidents, whatever they, they, yeah. they, when I tell them the story, like I can totally relate. Um, and so it started to, uh, just reconnect, uh, uh, reconnect me from the inside out. And my brain started to work better. I started to be able to think better and my, you know, your new, your mood, everything, just, just everything started to transform <laughs> within. Um, and so, yeah, just like really took, took me over. And, you know, like I said, it made my jujitsu better and I was able to, you know, transfer that, you know, that passion and that, sure. that the technique and the, the, the system to, to others and the same thing happened with them, you know, like my students. And so it's been, it's been, a, it's been an amazing journey. And, uh, you know, the Ted talk was a big, uh, was a big stretch for me, you know, like you said, you know, thanks for the, thanks for the, the respect, you know, to, to do that. Oh, you know, for sure. Because, uh, it, it was like, you know, it was like an yeah. MMA fight, right. You're out in the bullpen and you're right. waiting to go out there and you get one shot. And I felt, you know, I felt a lot of responsibility, uh, to do a good job, right. To really sure. be able to, you know, represent the system and, and you know, tell the, tell tell my story, but you know, I want to I want to make sure I, I you know do a good job, right? To 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 grow, help grow the system, and the power the power that it has, right? To to do exactly. So, yeah. So yeah. So that's yeah, awesome. Right? Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was it was it was I said so. One of my purple belts, one of our teammates, uh, was recently diagnosed with MS. Mm. He's thirty one years old. You know, yeah, yeah. had some. He also does pro wrestling, which isn't great for your body, you know, but um, he had a lot of um, numbness on the one side of his body. So that's what turned it into it, his. He didn't have anything. His brain didn't show up anything, but it was more his spine, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's been talking to some people about some in- infusion treatments, I guess you can do. And um, but yeah. he's got yeah. a good mindset, too. Yeah, I mean, right. That's uh, it's uh, I think I think. And people that don't, if you don't, not even if you, if you have an autoimmune or MS, whatever, Mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody can, can benefit from these things. And if you, you know, do any kind of research and look really, um, you know, you know, if you go to the doctor, like, you know, also like taking everything, ask questions, take everything with a grain of salt when somebody tells you something because it's an opinion. And, you know, unfortunately that's like take a pill or, you know, or surgery is kind of the easy way. You know, a lot of people don't have the discipline, right. To, to do the things, to do the work, but like mindset, right. Mindset. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Like quality yeah. movement. That's why jujitsu is so important, right. For people to keep moving. Um, but also, also add this tack fit component to it too, because we get stuck in those positions, right. Over and over and over. Um, and we want to be able to do that. I want to be able to do this for the rest of my life. You know, I want to be my, my best at every age and I want the same for my students. Right. Um, and then, um, you know, all those, all those, uh, doing all those things, right. It stay, keeps you young, keeps you young sure. and, yeah. and in the game. Yeah. I mean, that experience that trajected your whole life, you know, basically after that, like by getting in the tech fit and, and learning all about that and everything, mm-hmm. it's really changed everything for you going forward. Your mindset was the first key to it. Obviously when you yeah. said I can beat this, I can win, which is, you know, anyone that deals with anything in their entire life, if you believe that you belong there and that you can do it, you can keep pushing forward. And obviously, yeah. as I always say, surround yourself with good people, people that are going to, you know, be 
challenger and encourager and, you know, all that good stuff, you know, certain people that sit at your table, as I said, Chad, hears me talk about this, our listeners mm-hmm. do too. Um, but that's huge. Like Alberto, you've already, that was like a huge thing. You know, you were like, I can beat this. I can win this match. Wait, I can beat this MS. Like, yeah. Because a lot of people may be like, oh, okay, just give me the books of drugs and let me take them in my life. You know, and you hey, know, I've done I've done some podcasts know. with right with people with MS. Like there's a Capoeira master, Master Shushu that mm. I did a podcast with. And uh, man, you know, when you do the research on the drugs, the drugs may or may not help you. That's what it said. Right. When you, read the yeah. catalog, you know, uh, same thing with him. That's what he told me. He started to gain weight. He started to get depressed. He started to, uh, you know, just not, you know, slow down. Right. And so he got off the drugs and started to do research on how to eat properly. Sure. And, uh, and that, that's how he, that's how he lives his life now. And he's doing great, you know? Um, so, you know, like speaking of all that stuff, like, you know, just, I think the, that big, the big thing for me, right. Was, uh, you know, the doctor saying like, you know, treating me like my life was over and, and, uh, and he doesn't mean anything by it. Right. He's just, you know, but it was heavy, you know, it was very heavy. Oh yeah. yeah it's nothing like, yeah. It's like and, telling uh, someone they'll never walk again. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, yeah. And uh, man, did you just see, you know, like it's show yeah. me like the mindset, what, how powerful the mind the mind is. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, I knew like, it, there's like no question. Like I know, I knew I could win. Yeah. And, uh, I just have to find the right things to do. Right. And then I found tack, but lo- uh, luckily, um, well, you know 2007 but i got a second chance to really do it and sure. uh, yeah man the, the rest is history i'm trying to spread <clears> it yeah. and you know i uh gonna evolve business wise yeah. not only am i am i a client right but uh <laughs> you also <laughs> yeah yeah you're more than a client you can, <laughs> you can uh you can you can run a complete ad commercial not only am i a client but i <laughs> that that thing. Hair club hair club for, for me <laughs> you guys remember that thing oh yeah, yeah. for sure yeah another nostalgic time of seeing a yeah, commercial going yeah. wow yeah. wow you can buy stuff I didn't, I didn't need to be i didn't i didn't need to get involved right with this with with tag fit you know um i'm very happy with my jiu-jitsu and my sure. lifestyle uh, but it was something that like i could not do you know what i mean because yeah oh yeah me and and you know what I, what I know what it can give others and, uh, it can help a lot of people uh, yeah. live their best life. And, you know, it's something I'm, I'm really willing to give my all for. That's awesome, man. Are yeah. you, uh, so are you going to compete? Are you going to compete now? Like masters? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna to compete again. I just, I'm really focused right now on, on just work on tack fit, you know, and okay. all the things that we have, you know, like, yeah, I'm like the CEO. And so I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of business things with, with them, but I'm, I'm connected every day with, with jujitsu. It's a part of my, my well-being right as yeah well. sure yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah no. you know, it's like 100%. who i am and if i if i don't do it if i don't do it every day um um you know i'm not happy yeah and so that's, that's something that's not negotiable so i i do it every day and i'm connected and you know and just the whole thing right the whole spectrum of jujitsu like uh, teaching uh, training uh you know being connected with helping others right sure. um you so, hold yourself yeah, accountable, I, you know? Yeah. But I, I will compete again. Um, I just have to get through these uh, next, next probably year, at least another year. And then I'm going to re right reevaluate, you know, and then go from there, see cool. what I'm going to do. Uh, but I love, I love competing and, and uh, definitely want to represent, you know uh, uh, you know, everything that I, that I've been doing, you know, my school, my, my students, my, sure. my friends, my, my lineage, my, yeah, you know, yeah, tactic, yeah. you know, attack fit really show what, what it's done for me. And that uh, makes me really uh, be able to tap into something that's bigger than myself. And I think that's a good place to be. And that's a powerful oh, place to be. Super. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Definitely. Um, I, gosh, I'm really terrible. <laughs> I lost it again. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. No, I was just like, I was like, oh, no, wait a minute. I was thinking of something as you were saying the last thing. I was like, crap, crap. You got anything for him, Chad? I, I'm going to go blank here for a second. No, I mean, it's just awesome to talk to you. Um, what I was going to say is, you know, when you were talking about what you've been through and um, I think with all of us, how we, how we grew up, you weren't taught to talk. It was okay to talk about this kind of stuff, right? Like our dads were, the oh. manly, were, were like the manly men, right? You kept everything inside. 
where I think that's where just like jujitsu, we talk about growing, that's where we've grown and it's okay to talk about this stuff. I talk about, you know, I've dealt with some anxiety stuff and, and I used to keep it in like a lot, like my kids didn't know about it. Nobody knew about it. And the more I started talking about it, the more I felt better you know, just getting it out there. Yeah. So that was just I think, something I was thinking I think, about. Yeah, I, I think, wanted. I think jujitsu, it definitely helps you, right. Become more yeah. vulnerable because, uh, yeah, you, you put yourself in a vulnerable position every time you train, right. Yeah. So you can always tap oh, you yeah. out somebody, uh, something and you know, always going to happen. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, something jujitsu definitely can help you help that help. I think helps everybody with, right. For sure, um, sure. I also did some like emotional intelligence courses, you know, just mm-hmm. to better myself and it really helped me just kind of understand, really understand, you know, the, the, the power of being vulnerable. Right. And yeah. to, for people to, you know, uh, you know, believe, you know, just connect more with people. Sure. Right. I think we all need, uh, need it's when you, things, right? when you start understanding your own mind and how it it's functioning and, or what it's tells you what to do and not to do, so to speak, you know what I mean? Cause your mind is your biggest combat person <laughs> really. yeah. you're, you're yeah. your biggest yeah. opponent right your biggest, biggest opponent, opponent for sure 100 um, 100 you know so once you learn that kind of stuff like you learn to overcome that stuff or you learn that your mind's going to try to keep you from not doing certain things and you and you dig deeper and listen to other stuff then i can see i tell people all the time you can be more successful in your life and everything that you're doing you know so you like that's really like that kudos you know for that like that and what Chaz talk about you know talking about anxiety it's not easy but you do when you start understanding your mind more and then you bring it forth and your mind's telling you don't do it don't say this you can't beat this you can't do that oh keep it inside but when you're like no 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 no. we got to get yeah so i think that 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 helped me right just to kind of go on a stage like that and uh and just talk about it right share my story yeah yeah. Um, I was very private and I held, definitely held things. <laughs> people, did, people had no idea, you know, cause I was competing a lot. I was doing all these different things, but I was definitely uh, behind the scenes, you know, not doing so well. Sure. Um, yeah, definitely. I, until, I I started do, until I started to do tactic, you know, and then mm-hmm. things started to ch- turn around for me. Um, but uh, you know, the Brene Brown, right. Like the, just the, the power of being vul- the vulnerability. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, I think uh, it's so important, right. Um, to, to be able to connect with, people because everybody has every if you're human right that's what makes us human yes is we all have insecurities we all have you know whatever we all well we all have our things you know and uh and it's okay right to talk about it and 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 to share the your 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 human sh- shortcomings or your yeah, yeah your, your yeah. things that you think you know that you're you're short on right yeah. <laughs> yeah. i just remembered what i was going to ask you the bats are they weighted are they different weights? they're weighted yes they're weighted. okay so, yeah so we have uh there's they start from five pounds three pounds five pounds all the way up to 45 pounds wow nice yeah it's kind of like chad you have like a mini one don't you i have one of the five pound yeah just a five pound like a rip, like yeah like i got on, like yeah, like I got on okay. amazon just to mess with yeah oh, okay and so okay. like it's cool right that the you know it's like it's like ancient like wrestling i don't know if you guys saw that movie good dungal that indian yep. wrestling movie. yes i love that they movie. have like, it was they have great. like little, little wood ones right yep and so it's, it's super old school from india right they have, they have you know indian indian clubs which are wood much lighter but then they have those meals those persian meals yep and they, they're also uh they're very big right they can be very big but they're much lighter because they're wood and the beautiful thing with the club bells is that they're steel right and you can really go heavier and have less have it take up less space and so there are just so many things that we can you can do with them um and it's real strength you know it's like mobility and strength you know like yeah you know, yeah like start to study fascia like the last like you know five six years i've just been going so heavy on neuroscience and fascia because i sure. want to understand how everything works yep. and why things started to come back for me it's like what's happening right uh and you know it's just, it's so interesting like fascia if you guys are aware what fascia is i am not if you eat an orange, right? Yeah. It's all the white stuff, like on a. Oh, on a, oh, okay. You know, okay. and then all, and between every slice, there's white stuff, right? And yep. every, 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 you know, every fiber, there's like white stuff, and so that interconnects all everything. And we have like different, um, different uh, uh, lines, fascial lines, if you want to call them, or fashion nets inside our body itself, right? Inside the structure, so ra- right? basically wrapping our, you know, wrapping all of our our, our skin, our muscles, sure. everything together. You know, around every muscle, there's the the, the white stuff, the fascia. Um, in the, like, for example, there's one from our eyebrow going all the way over our back, all the way down to the, to the bottom of our feet, you know, 
there's like ones like crisscross and just it's like a it's like a, a, a you know like a strut right it, it's it keeps us together okay right? mm-hmm. and it's uh you know our, our hormones our nervous system you know our immune system all goes through that and you know up to like maybe like seven years eight years ago um like they just think didn't think it was that important you know you medical school they cut it away like it's something that's not important but it's actually everything that's everything that's the living they even say our consciousness is in that wow uh, you know, I've done a lot of courses, you know, I don't sure, know. That's awesome. You know, it's crazy. Like, uh, you know, yeah. And I went to like all these, these conferences, fashion conferences in, in Germany. And, you know, I even did a, I even did a human cadaver, cadaver, like a dissection all the way down to the bone. Wow. You know? Really? And I was like, that, yeah, that was crazy. experience. <laughs> that was crazy. You know, like doctors, right. The last year of medical school, they do that just because I wanted to know, you know, and what sure. is a nerve, right? Like what does sure. MS do? What does multiple sclerosis do? Sure. Like your immune system attacks the myelin sheath, which is like the coating of your nerve. And so the electrical signal doesn't get to the spot, right? For example, you want to grab a cup and if the signal doesn't get to the hand, it's not going to be able to do it, right? That's why you start, you, people will end up in a wheelchair or not being able to do things. And so uh, the myelin, so what is a nerve, right? If you look at a medical book or you look at a, you know, some kind of chart, what is a nerve? It's like a little blue line, right? Right. But what is it, right? What is it? Like and physically. So, you have, yeah. so, you know, so around around all of it is like, depending on the size of the nerve and all that, but it's like fascia, right? It's like, you know, the the the, the coating, right? And then you have your myelin, which is like thin fat, fatty tissue, which is like the, you know, like the, the coating of the, of the electrical wire, right? And then the nerve itself, it's like pudding. Oh, wow. Really? It's like liquid. It's like, oh, slushy, but like okay. pudding. It's like pudding. And so what happens when it's very interesting and it's very important to know these things because I try to tell my students and educate people as much as they can, because, you know, like it's important to know these things because if you know these things, you get certain hormones get released and you understand sure, sure. your body yeah. better and you're able to recover from injuries. You know, for example, if there's like a trauma, your nervous system, it just gets tight and nothing goes through it. It's like a vice grip, right? Of, mm-hmm. of everything, your nerves, your blood, everything just gets, it gets constricted, right? Somebody gives you a charlo, it gets like super hard, right? And so like a lot of times, right? Like you, you know, a lot of jiu-jitsu guys, we use our lats, we pull, 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 right? And we don't realize it. Like a lot of my old black belt friends, like you, they lose their intern, like their elbow rotation because the when you turn your elbows in, you engage your lats, they just overuse their stuff. So you can't even, they use, they lose that range of motion. From doing it for so much. Yeah. So long. From doing it so much. Yeah. Your, your body just shuts off. It's like, don't, don't ever do this. Yeah, don't yeah, do yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Not you doing know? this anymore. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, uh, so that's why it's important to go the other way as well. Right. To keep everything flowing and to release the tension of that, that area, because if you don't release the tension, what happens is it dries out and the liquids don't go, go, don't go, don't go there. You know, there was a book called like, uh, there's some videos on YouTube too. You can look up like scrolling under the skin and there was this uh, uh, uh gumberto he's like a french he was a french hand surgeon and then when he started to have the technology of the of the cameras and stuff he started to go under the skin and start to see like what's going on here what what is this what is okay. that and he totally you know went down and started to be, become like an expert in fascia sure. right? and uh he has some interesting videos and movies called uh, scrolling under the skin some books too uh, but it's fascinating uh, because it's important because uh, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, some doctors aren't say a lot, but like, I think so, you know, like aren't up to date, you know, with these things, sure. you know, right. Because these things are, you know, a little bit newer. Um, uh, but it's important because, uh, you know, for example, one of my black belts, he's like, man, I went to the doctor and he says, I have to get shoulder surgery. And I'm like, let me see just from the things I knew this is like probably like four or five years ago. And I'm like, let me see. And sure enough, his lats are really tight. Okay. His lats are really tight. I'm like, man, I showed him how to stretch out his lats, you know, I was like, man, stretch out your lats like this, this, this week, do it every day this week and let me know how you feel. And so he believes me and I, I was, you know, he believed me. Right. And, and, and was, you know, black belt, you know, so luckily could jitsu. Right. And so he did it, you know, and guess what? No shoulder. His shoulder didn't hurt yeah. anymore at the end of the week. Oh, wow. And he never had to get surgery. Man, wow, and that goes awesome. the same way everywhere. You know, like I've yeah. had, uh, you know, for example, uh, one of my one of my uh, one of my my student, my uh, female student uh, is one of my favorite my one of my favorite stories just because you know she hurt her elbow one of the elbows and she you know she they she went to the doctor they put her in a sling 
you know, and uh, it still bothers her today. And she's going to go to a, you know, a tournament uh, abroad somewhere. And like right before, like the last day before she was going to go, uh, she fell on her arm, on her good arm and okay. hyperextended it even worse or, you know, hurt it even worse. Right. Ooh. And I'm like, okay, all right. All right. Okay. And so what I showed her, I was like, do the movements, you know, stay out of pain, do the movements, you know, elbow rotations, whatever. And, you know, especially on the plane because of the pressure and everything and do it every time you feel it, you know, anytime you feel it and, and, and that's the <clears> signal <throat> to do it. And she got better, man, in a week. And wow. that was my, Wow. She got better in a week. And guess what? Her her elbow completely healed the one that she moved right away. Nice. And animals do that, you know? And now that, that you know, that was actually my 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 buy-in to tack fit, you know, back in 2007, 2008, when I first met Sagas Sanan, I got thrown on my neck. I got suplayed. Uh, I was, you know, I was doing MMA and, and good rest of suplayed me. And my neck was man, it was messed up. I was so jacked up and I had a fight coming up. And uh, Scott was like, he did some assessments on me. Scott Sonnen did some assessments on me. And he showed me some movements to do. And I was able to, yeah, he's like, same thing, right? Every time I stay out of pain, but every time, every time you feel it, do these movements and the pain will go away. And when I did the movements and I was able to heal myself pretty much in a week. Wow. And that was something that I never forgot. And I knew it was like legit. Um, I didn't know everything else, but I knew sure. it was legit. And he did like this blog on, on, on me and, and uh, just sitting there, you know, I was like, okay, cool. I, that's when I, I felt like I got a second chance to really That was do the it. scratch that you needed. That was just that little scratch. You, you know, I was like, man, I, this is the fact that I can heal myself with movement because usually, right, right you get hurt, right? And don't move or whatever. Move, you know, yeah. Four to six weeks, uh, you know, take some pain pills, uh, maybe talk about surgery. Uh, that's kind of the protocol, right? You guys sure. Know. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. guess what? It never really heals and gets becomes 100%. Sure. But what I'm able to heal myself with movement and instead of being four to six even faster and, you know, and be even, even be a hundred percent, you know? Uh, so it's just like, I blew my mind. It was something I never forgot. And when I, when it was time to kind of find something, right. My subconscious took me there for that reason uh, to, to back to attack fit. And so here we are. Uh, that was in 2007. Seven. So, wow. And wow. like 20, 14 years ago, 14 years so, ago. Yeah. yeah That's so, awesome, man. And it's, yeah. uh, to see it grow this, um, I don't want to say self-healing because I think it's, in my opinion, it's the right healing. I think it's it, people need to understand that they can holistically do this stuff the right way mm -hmm. and do it. Um, when they get around the right people that know what they're doing and they don't need to always, and now I'm not saying that everyone out there doesn't need surgery when they need surgery. Correct. Right? Correct. No, some of you the know what I mean? But, Absolutely. The, but ask questions, right? Ask questions. Right. Ask don't, questions. Don't listen because somebody's a doctor or whatever. Right. Ask questions and see what they say. And the pharmaceutical industry is so gigantic and billions of dollars where they want you to, you know, they get into the doctors and they get stuff and they're like, hey, here's this, this, and this, take this, this, and this. And uh, you know, as the older I got, you know, and yeah, I'm not ancient or anything, but I started really reading and thinking about that kind of stuff. And it just really bothered me that that was always the fix mm -hmm. that it was always like, oh, well here, take this pill and you'll be good. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. it started bothering me over time. And I, I have some medical things in my body and stuff. And I chose to do other approaches, um, mm -hmm. of not taking specific medications that were, Hey, you here, we'll just give you this and you can have this all the time. And it's, it's like, a slippery I don't, slope, right? Yeah. You don't want to do that. So yeah, I always try to, slope. you know, and Chad and Chad's very much like that too. I mean, you, you know, mm -hmm. you'd say you're more on like eating healthy and eating good stuff and putting good stuff into your body and stuff. Yeah. As much as you can. I mean, right. you know, you go back to what I talked about with, with dealing a little bit of anxiety. I went to a doctor and they, you know, gave prescribed me some, right. you know, here, take this. And, and I, it was so, it was so bad for a little while that I did it. Right. It's like, okay. Maybe sure. this will work. And I was on it for about a week, week and a half. I wasn't eating right. Like I didn't want to do jujitsu, which is not like me, you know? And I'm like, I, I called him. I'm like, I'm done with this. He's like, all right, we'll get this one out of your system. We'll try another one. I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, we'll figure out how to deal with this. So, yeah. you know, you just got to figure, you know, like you said, ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just ask questions and yeah. talk about it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, like how, how important jujitsu is, right? Like, yeah. You're like, you know, that that's, man, keeping people sane and, uh, you know, 
it's a slippery slope with any of these drugs, like high blood pressure or, or antidepressants, right? Yeah, hundred percent addicted to those things. It's yep. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. <clears throat> Luckily, you're able to, you know, you stop right away. But I know people that have been on things for years, and then you're stuck on them, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, if you know, there's side effects right with these medications too. Oh, yeah. 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 If you can heal yourself naturally, like with movement, jujitsu, right, training, you know. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Right. right. Yeah. 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 You're selling yourself short if you don't, right. if you don't do yeah. your due diligence in that way. So, yeah. yeah. And I, I, you can't say enough about that mindset too. And, you know, somebody we talk about on the podcast a lot is, um, <clears throat> is a good friend of mine actually started the gym that I, that I trained, that I manage East coast, uh, Steve Heinemann, he passed away at cancer about seven years ago. Now, um, he had stage four cancer. The first doctor gave him six months to live. Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't accept that you're fired. And he changed his mindset and made it like four and a half years, I think with stage four cancer, Mm -hmm. but it was just that, that mindset that I don't accept what you're telling me, you know? And yeah. he changed, you know, he ate, he was always a pretty, pretty good shape, but like his, his clean, his eating went more clean and, you know, working out. And he was just a, that mindset, he was just a special person. Like his first surgery, they removed a foot of his colon and nobody could find him before surgery. Yeah. He was out in the hospital running steps mm-hmm. to prepare because, you know, he's trained his whole life. He trained MMA fighters and that's, that's how he dealt with it. It was, yeah. it was a fight, you know? That's it. That's it. Yeah. So that's awesome, man. Very good stuff. Cool. We've kept you well over an hour, my friend, (laughs) and appreciate every minute of it. Let me ask you one thing. What is the most memorable match you've ever had? Most memorable match. Um, It can be anything BJJ or, you know, like in the cage. Really, you know, the king of the cage was big, you know, with the hobby basket. That was nice, you know, and all these things were nice, you know. But I think when I when I say like my most memorable match, memorable moment, um, it's that, you know, it's that when I when I won that that uh the, the open weight with the nice. food poisoning and yeah. Yeah. showed me that, you know. I would suspect that that would be it. <laughs> it was just, I had the highlight of my career and it was something that, you know, it doesn't really mean that I, I, I beat JF uh, Madrid open, open weight, like it doesn't mean anything. Right. But what I got from it was like, it changed my life. It changed everything. Sure. Yeah. Just the power. It really, it just, it made, it made me, it showed me that we are powerful beyond, you know, you know, beyond measure, we, our mindset, yes. our mind is so strong in our mind. If we change our mindset, speaking of mindset, right. It's uh, it can change everything. And I just knew at that moment that uh, what the, the mind is capable of and that I can win. And that was uh, just, it was everything. And I've had a lot of great moments, King of the cage, winning in Brazil, you know, like some of these tournaments traveling around, uh, sh- you know, sure. You know, but uh, um, this, uh, this, that moment for me was definitely a defining moment. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Man. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Man, Alberto, thank you so much for uh, taking the time and hanging out with us today. Appreciate you My so pleasure. much. Thank everything. You guys. Yeah. Everything you're doing in the community and uh, everything you're, you know, everything you're teaching, everything you're about. It's, it's great. It's your future is super bright, man. Like the rest of ours that keep the right mindset and keep going. This is yet to come, right? Yeah. The Absolutely. best is yet to come. That's right, man. Hey, why don't you uh, shout out all your social media or any, anything you want sponsors, how yeah, yeah. tell people so, how to get know, the tech fit, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Alberto crane. All my stuff is Alberto crane, you know, my Instagram, my, my Twitter. I only really, I just connect my Instagram to Twitter, um, you know, Facebook, all that. Um, but tag fit, you know, tag at tag fit, Instagram, uh, uh, um, my Facebook, you know, are the best ways in tag fit.com. My definitely, my, my tag is my sponsor, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Ways, you know, um, um, so, you know, it's like, uh, you know, like we have, a uh, my, we have a cafe, acai jungle cafe. If you're ever in Burbank, it's, uh, if you fly into the airport, it's the hip spot and really good food and acai nice. and just lifestyle, right? We brought some of the you know, my memories from when I was younger to, to hear. So it's really cool. nice. Um, but yeah, tack fit, tack fit, jujitsu, you know, do that's it. All, that's all we need, you know? Nice. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> it. If you do that all the time, it's just life yeah. is good, man. All is, all is good. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. All right, my brother. Well, thank you so much again, man. Appreciate you thank very you much. Take care of yourself. Good luck in all you do, man. God bless you guys too. Thank you. Take it easy. Yeah. Thank you. All right. 
Hey everyone, we hope you enjoyed the show today. Remember, go out there and check out all our sponsors. By supporting them, you support the Limitless Radiocast podcast. It helps us bring you guys content each and every week and keeps us going. Thank you and we appreciate you for all you do. Limitless Radiocast is brought to you by True Tubes Tattoo Supply. Limitless 10 at checkout for a 10% discount on all your tattoo needs. They have state-of-the-art equipment for everyday needs in the tattooer's life. Check them out. Remember, stay true. Limitless Radiocast is also brought to you by Magic City Brewing Company. Best beer brewed in the hometown of Akron, Ohio. Check them out. Check out rollamongus.com. Put in Limitless 20 at checkout for a 20% discount on all your fight gear needs. That's geese, lanky geese, rash guards, spats, fight shorts. They have t-shirts and accessories. Check them out. Great place ran by a great guy. Also check out battlebomb.com. Put in Limitless 20 at checkout for a 20% discount. You have CBD and non-CBD rub to rub on those aches and pains from hard training, hard work, everyday life. Check them out. Remember, Limitless 20 at checkout, battlebomb.com.